And I can tell you that speaking with people, like we just heard from Osprey about Sonia Wajajada, who's a good friend, and other leaders who I've been in touch with of late from the National Indigenous Movement, they really are calling for actions of this kind on a larger scale. They need solidarity right now. We need to understand what we're up against. We know about fascism in this country. We know Donald Trump. We know about a regime that's not so out of control. But Bolsonaro, his, his government's worse. If it's possible, they're worse. They're calling upon these ex-military people, people who are involved in the military dictatorship. They're eulogizing Brazil's military dictatorship. They're trying to go back to that dark moment when there was actual open genocide of indigenous peoples. Over 8,000 people massacred in their lands over 20 years during the dictatorship. They're returning to that time and they're trying to. And one of the most important social movements in Brazil right now, one of the most important opponents of Bolsonaro is the National Indigenous Movement, and they really need our support. They're not alone, of course. There's other movements in Brazil fighting for land distribution, fighting for the rights of LGBT communities, for the rights of Afro-Brazilian communities, for the rights of free association, free speech, for democracy. These are all things that are under threat in Brazil right now. And it's come to a head. We understand the fires that are burning in Brazil, unprecedented fires, are a manifestation of something that's been happening for a long time. And we see that what's behind it, Brazil's agribusiness sector is who brought Bolsonaro to power, who's wagging the dog of his policy. The people who are setting the fires are doing that on behalf of him and these wanton fascist actors who want to see out the forest flattened to produce cattle for us to eat, to produce soy for the world to consume. We understand that we're complicit in what's happening. And Bolsonaro is not listening to his people. He's not trying to have any dialogue with his opponents, with people who are trying to rein in or, or moderate his behavior. That's why it's so important the international community comes together and acts in solidarity and acts in concert with the movement in Brazil. But it's not enough. The man is a pariah, his government's a pariah. Brazil is unfortunately becoming a pariah state when it, become, when it comes to the question of environmental protection and human rights. So do they care about their reputation? I don't think so, except for when it translates into money. Money is what they care about. And we have a lot to say in how that agribusiness sector is able to continue selling its wares, continue to find markets internationally. But I want to say something about what's happening in the midst of these fires right now. Just today, an ex-general, a member of Bolsonaro's regime, his cabinet, said that we have to revise the titling, the demarcation of all indigenous territories in Brazil. Can you believe the audacity of these people while these fires are burning in 150 indigenous territories right now? And across 33% of the fires are burning in protected areas in the Brazilian Amazon. We're seeing this crisis of global scale, this global emergency emerging. We see these people calling for all of the protections to be removed from indigenous territories. We see people in Brazil's Congress trying to open up these territories to mining, to agribusiness, to infrastructure development. All of this in the name of greed. And we're behind them somehow. We're supporting them somehow. How? Our friend Jeff here will talk about that. But Amazon Watch is also looking at actors. And just today we're launching a list of the 30 dozen companies that we are patronizing, be them the sellers of our meats, of other products that we consume, the financial institutions that we have our, have our money at or our investments at. We need to understand how we're complicit. And we need to make our voices heard in the streets and in their pockets. Next week, Thursday, there's going to be a major international mobilization. This beautiful action that we're at today is a precursor to that. We need to come back. We need to come back and make our voices heard. We need to be standing in solidarity with the hundreds of actions that are happening in Brazil. We're taking the lead for Brazil's movement. We're not acting alone. They need to understand they're not alone. So uh, let me pass the mic here to Jeff who can tell you a bit more about some of these financial institutions and how we can take concrete action here today. Thank you so much. 
Thank you, Christian. Hello, good morning, relatives. Uh, my name is Jeff Conant. I live here in occupied Chichenyo Ohlone Territory, and I uh, direct the International Forests Program with Friends of the Earth. 